Awesome. Uh, so uh, I'll be presenting um, Batman and the Linux KPI running uh, Linux drivers on FreeBSD. So uh, I guess I'll start with uh, presenting a bit about myself. Uh, so I'm a computer science student at UC Louvain, which is in uh, Belgium. Um, uh, yeah, I work part time at uh, Benewable, which is an uh, energy storage solutions uh, startup. Um, I'm interested in uh, graphics programming and BSD a bit. I mean, just enough to come to BSD can, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, don't hesitate to interrupt me if I'm talking too quietly because I have a tendency to do that and uh, to ask questions. I mean, uh, there we go. Oh yeah, and I was a GSOC uh, 2023 student and uh, uh, my GSOC project was to uh, uh, implement Batman on uh, FreeBSD, which is why I'm giving a talk about this. Um, right, oh yeah, and I have a dog. He's called Bubbles. That's a picture of him right there. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Right, so uh, what is the focus of this talk? So uh, I guess there are mainly like two parts um, that I want to cover. Um, uh, first of all is uh, the, the Linux KPI, uh, the state of affairs um, with regards to porting Linux drivers to uh, FreeBSD. Um, and I'll end with a, a bit of a case study uh, of porting Batman to FreeBSD, which uh, again was my GSOC project. Right. Uh, so, what is uh, the Linux KPI? So, uh, basically all it is is a bunch of uh, headers which map um, uh, Linux functions to uh, FreeBSD kernel functions. And now these are internal kernel functions. So it's not the same thing as the Linux data, which uh, translates system calls uh, from user space programs. Um, yeah, it purely, uh, purely de deals with internal uh, uh, kernel functions. Uh, and these headers are rooted in uh, this directory, syscompass, Linux KPI, common include. So uh, one example of, uh, of, of such a wrapper is uh, get random u32 uh, below, which does a certain thing on, uh, on Linux, and uh, its equivalent on FreeBSD would be arc4 random uniform. Um, and so uh, this is in uh, uh, linux slash random uh, dot h. Uh, it just translates this, uh, this Linux function to uh, the equivalent FreeBSD function. So I mean, that's uh, quite simple. Uh, right. And so uh, I guess to, to, to show how this kind of works in practice, for a kernel module in practice, uh, I've got this really, really simple uh, kernel module here, which, um, I mean, all it does is, I think I can cycle here, yes. Uh, it, it just, uh, you've got this init function, which is the, 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 uh, it's the entry function of our kernel module, which is executed when we uh, load it. Uh, and all it does is it calls this uh, PR info function on Linux, which just prints uh, info to uh, the kernel log. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other metadata associated to this. Um, so how would we bring this to FreeBSD using the Linux KPI? Uh, well, essentially, uh, you just <laughs> copy paste your code and it's supposed to work a uh, uh, source of out of the box. Uh, the only real thing that needs to be done is to uh, add these um, uh, guards so that when you're on FreeBSD, you uh, uh, depends on uh, Linux KPI, which is kind of a, uh, Thin by this, but maybe if I leave the cursor off. Yeah, yeah, so that's that. Um, and then obviously we need to make a make file, uh, which just includes uh, the Linux KPI, uh, uh, includes and uh, source files. Um, and then uh, if we try to run this on FreeBSD, then it works. It prints out what we'd expect to, 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 to the logs. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a pretty simple example, but there we are. Uh, so. I mean, right now, Linux KPI can do obviously more than printing hello world, otherwise it wouldn't be the most useful thing ever. Uh, so it's uh, currently used for, uh, um, for running full network drivers. A uh, big example is IWL Wi-Fi, uh, which comes from Linux's IWL Wi-Fi, believe it or not, uh, and full graphics drivers. So uh, the, the kernel side of, um, of uh, graphics drivers for AMD and Intel chips uh, uh, work, i9, 15, Radeon, and AMD, uh, and I don't think uh, uh, Panfrost or anything ARM related works, but uh, anyway. Uh, right, so uh, let's uh, cover how to add new things. So let's say our uh, kernel module uh, got an update on Linux, uh, which now this PR info uh, function got replaced by hypothetical function. This is a new function in Linux which doesn't yet exist in the Linux KPI. Uh, and obviously if we try to build this on FreeBSD, uh, then it won't build because we haven't implemented hypothetical function yet. Uh, so first thing to do is uh, we'd add a stub, uh, which is you know just uh, the function with uh, usually uh, uh, we write PR debug to do and then uh, and then the name of the function, um, and uh, yeah 
uh, if we try to run this uh, on, on Linux, then we see that this is the output. If we run it on FreeBSD, then obviously we just get this to do thing. Uh, and the first question to ask ourselves is, uh, does this really matter? So I mean, um, sometimes maybe these function calls are, are going to be relevant on, on Linux, um, but they won't necessarily be relevant to FreeBSD. So I guess in, in this case, you'd have to kind of understand uh, what the kernel module is trying to do and uh, see if is it actually worth trying to implement this uh, uh, on Linux, on, in the Linux KPI button. And so if the answer is yes to this, then you try to implement the uh, uh, observed behavior. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're allowed to read uh, the Linux uh, source code as long as uh, the, the, the resulting implement implementation isn't isomorphic uh, to that. Um, and uh, yeah, this code might be buggy, so don't copy it, but <laughs> it's just to show that, uh, that this implements the observed behavior that we had on Linux. And if we try and run this on, on FreeBSD now, uh, then it works and we get the same output as we would on Linux. So uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of the, the, the cycle of the, of the Linux API. There's a, there's a few more things, but the basics are that. Uh, so I mean, uh, I'd like to maybe take a, a small break to ask if there are any questions related to this before I move on to the next part. So does anyone have any questions related to the Linux KPI? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of messy edge cases, and I'll, uh, I'll cover some of them uh, a bit later. But yeah, no, that happens. And sometimes there are functions which uh, um, aren't really cleanly uh, uh, mapped to just one wrapper in a header file. So yeah. Um, for the record, the question was, uh, are there any functions that sometimes require states to be stored? Um, right. Now, Batman. Uh, so first of all, I'll give a little bit of background of what Batman is. So first of all, Batman is very annoying to Google, uh, as I, uh, I guess you can guess. Uh, and it stands for the better approach to mobile ad hoc networking. And uh, it's essentially what uh, OSPF or OSR does. Um, but it's, uh, uh, it's optimized for really, really big uh, wireless meshes. So these are meshes where uh, you're constantly uh, changing topologies and, uh, and link qualities. And that's stuff that on big networks, uh, OSR is uh, uh, fairly slow at, or can be fairly slow at. Uh, so I, yeah, I did add this, uh, this, this graphic very <laughs> late in the presentation, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys probably all know what a routing algorithm would do, but uh, in, in case you don't, uh, all Batman really does is say we have these three nodes in our network, uh, A, B, and C. Uh, a is connected to B, B is connected to C, A is not connected to C. Uh, then if A wants to send a packet uh, to C, then we have to find a way to pass this packet through B and onto C. Great, right. so uh, what, is this, uh, what is Batman used for? Um, so uh, really the driving force in the development uh, of Batman was uh, Freifunk, which means free radio in German. Uh, and so it's, it's yeah, basically this big community of wireless networks uh, in Germany and uh, there's a little heat map of, uh, of where the nodes are primarily located. So, I mean, as you can see, it's uh, pretty German. Um, and uh, yeah, so they have this little app on your phone where uh, you, you can see uh, uh, a map and you can see where you are on the map, and you can see uh, the nodes that are close to you. So in this case, uh, maybe I'm in Hanover, and I see this node, and I can see information about it. There's information, yeah, it's difficult to see on screen, but there's information about how many clients are connected and, and so forth. Um, right, uh, so let me go through a bit of a quick history of Batman. Uh, so uh, I guess it was kind of born out of uh, Freifunk uh, feeling a bit limited with uh, OSR. Uh, as mentioned previously, uh, OSR for big, big networks with loads of big topology changes are, is, is not the most, uh, the most efficient. Um, and so uh, initially this was uh, just a user space daemon called Batman D. And then uh, uh, this kind of moved on to uh, Batman uh, Advanced Kernel Module, uh, which, yeah, I'll, I'll cover a bit more how that works uh, later. And then there was uh, BMX 6 and 7, which I don't know too much about, but those were offshoots, offshoots of uh, of Batman, which I don't think are really actively developed anymore, but yeah, I thought I'd mention that. Um, and yeah, a bit of a, a quick fun fact uh, while I'm here. Uh, in Silicon Valley, uh, the show, TV show, um, uh, uh, season four, episode two or something, when uh, this guy Richard's building the new internet, uh, he does write Batman uh, on the side of the board, and that's probably a reference to Batman. And on the topic of small facts, or fun facts, uh, the smallest bat in the world is actually the smallest mammal in the world. And it's the kitty's hogged, uh, hog-nosed bat, sorry. So 
the more you know. Anyway, uh, so how does Batman work? So Batman, uh, uh, for each node in Batman, it really only cares about local changes in topology. So whereas uh, OSR is, is uh, each node knows about the whole network, uh, Batman is much more uh, restricted in what it knows. And so that's, uh, that's partly what makes it uh, more performant. And it's a layer two routing protocol, which means that basically everything above layer two gets wrapped in, uh, in a Batman packet. And that looks like this. So in this example of a TCP packet, uh, you have uh, this packet that we want to send. Uh, if I can try and select it. It's very difficult to uh, coordinate here. Um, uh, and then you've got this ha ha um, Batman header, which has a, uh, yeah, the actual Batman header and then another Ethernet header, and that wraps your whole packet. And that's uh, sent through uh, your nodes um, with Batman, and then uh, Batman's like magic source uh, does all the routing of those packets uh, at the end. Um, so yeah, on, on Linux, this is, uh, uh, all this is provided by a, a kernel module called Batman Advanced, uh, and its equivalent on FreeBSD is the same thing with an underscore. Um, and uh, there are so-called hard and soft interfaces. So a hard interface would be like an actual hardware interface, or in the case of a virtual machine, that would be like VTNet0. Um, and the soft interface is uh, the Batman interface, BatAd0. And the soft interface uh, basically groups together a bunch of hard interfaces. And your OS interacts with the soft interface, and then Batman like handles all the uh, dispatching to your uh, hard interfaces. Um, and so you, you've got these uh, since Batman Five, you've got these echolocator packets, which are sent uh, over your hard interfaces to like discover links, possible links between uh, between Batman nodes. And then you've also got these uh, OGM uh, two packets, which are, are used to, uh, which are sent between the soft interfaces of your nodes, which are used to, um, yeah, discover the best routes uh, throughout your network. Um, yeah, right, uh, so how do we set up a, a Batman network on FreeBSD? Uh, so we start off with, uh, I mean, obviously loading the kernel module, Batman add. Uh, then we need to, to up the uh, hard end space we want to use, and we need to set the, the MTU to uh, 1532, because our, um, this part of the, 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 the packet is uh, 32 bytes of overhead that we add to our packet, so we need to increase the MTU by 32 bytes. Um, then we create uh, the, the soft interface, uh, and we uh, use this RA parameter to, to, to select the uh, routing algorithm. So uh, Batman add supports Batman 4 and Batman 5. Uh, I think in practice, Batman 4 is almost not used anymore. Um, but yeah. And so this creates the, the bat add uh, zero uh, soft interface. Um, and then you, you can set the uh, uh, master, so that's a, a bit of a, a newish concept uh, that Batman uh, brings, uh, which is you take your hard interface and you make it a slave of the soft interface. So your soft interface um, contains a bunch of hard interfaces which are linked through this uh, uh, infconfig master command. Um, and then all the way at the end, you give an, uh, an IP address to your uh, soft interface, and then uh, you're kind of done. You can start using it. Uh, so th this also supports the Linux Linuxulator. So uh, I mean, it's essentially the same way as you do it on Linux. Um, you just use the IP commands to uh, IP root commands to just do exactly the same thing. Um, right. So let me move on to a, a quick demo of uh, of Batman. Um, it's over here. Yes. Right. So I kind of had these nice uh, MOTV. Uh, uh, graphics here, but they're a bit cut off because the screen is a bit small, but anyway. Uh, so let me run. So I have, uh, on, on each one of these uh, uh, machines, I have a, uh, yeah, I should probably explain. Okay, so the, the first machine is uh, linked um, to the second machine uh, through, uh, through, through a bridge, and then the second machine is linked to the third machine through a different bridge. So the first and second machine aren't linked whatsoever. So that's similar to the uh, uh, napkin example that I showed uh, earlier. Um, and so, yeah, on each one of these machines, there's a script. Um, yeah, and the script uh, very simply does what I showed uh, um, uh, previously. And uh, if I run all of these, .sh, this one, b.sh. So yeah, b.sh um, is essentially the same thing. It's just that it does it for two hard interfaces instead of just one. So you can see here, it sets two of them. Um, and then, uh, yeah, on machine C, it's the same thing as uh, on machine A. And so here I can try pinging uh, the first machine. And even though it has no uh, direct connection, 
uh, it can still ping, and I mean, everything works. So if I try uh, uh, netcat um, this, uh, then, oops, let's go up a bit, and then three, and then four. No, did I do three? Yes. Okay, I can write, and I mean, it all, it all works as you'd kind of expect. Uh, and I did have a demo here where I have a, um, an Ubuntu environment here. Um, Right, uh, no, I give me extra space here. Uh, right, either way, whatever. Oh yeah, I think I need to load Linux 64, but I, anyway. Um, yeah, uh, it's supposed to work uh, between uh, Linux to later um, nodes, so you can just run Linux to later on a node and use it as if you were purely on Linux, uh, but I broke that somehow uh, a few days ago, so I mean, that demo doesn't work anyway, so. Anyway, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the demo of Batman. So uh, now I guess I'll cover uh, the major things that I had to get done to port uh, Batman Advanced. Uh, and so, yeah, just to clarify, the porting process of getting Batman working on FreeBSD is really just porting Batman Advanced, the implementation on Linux. And I use the, K the Linux KPI for that. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start off with what had to be changed uh, with regards to ifconfig. Uh, so I had to add a new uh, uh, bat app cloner uh, with the RA parameter. Um, so uh, yeah, this only uses Netlink. There's no IOCTL uh, interface for this. Um, for now, there's no modification possible of other settings. Well, that needs um, a generic Netlink to work, and that's not yet on FreeBSD. Um, so for now, you just use uh, the, the defaults uh, that Batman gives you. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had to add the concept of, uh, of, of setting the master interface uh, on FreeBSD. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to say thanks to Alex uh, Many or how you pronounce that tag name, uh, because he's the one who made a, a Netlink on FreeBSD, and I think without that, it would have been significantly more difficult to support uh, uh, Batman Advanced. Um, right, uh, on the Linux later side of things, it was actually in incredibly simple. I kind of half worked out the box. Uh, all that really needs to be done is to translate uh, the interface names uh, from Linux, which uses bat and then uh, the interface number, to bat add and then the interface number on FreeBSD. Um, yeah. That was pretty simple. The reason why it's, uh, it's not bat and then the number on FreeBSD is because uh, FreeBSD interfaces uh, follow the cloner and then number uh, format. And uh, since the cloner is called bat add, I could just use bat for that. Um, then uh, there were a few changes uh, to, to be made to, to, to Batman Advance. So uh, when porting over uh, something on Linux to FreeBSD uh, with the Linux KPI, the idea is to keep the source code as similar as possible to how it is on Linux because that aids in maintainability, it aids in uh, downstreaming changes when there are updates, and also it helps with upstreaming your own changes if you make any changes uh, on FreeBSD side. Um, but that's not always possible. There are some cases where it's uh, not really feasible or it doesn't really make sense to, 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 to do that. Um, and so, uh, well, one such example is with uh, uh, namespace collisions. So there's this function here on, on Linux called def get by index, and uh, FreeBSD has an equivalence function, but that does or works differently. Uh, and so uh, in the Linux KPI, this is implemented by Linux underscore dev uh, whatever. Uh, and so in, 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 in places in code where you do this, then you just add like an if guard. And uh, I mean, hopefully you try to minimize the amount of places that that happens, but inevitably it sometimes happens. Um, and then, yeah, the biggest modification that was needed to this was uh, uh, to, to add the cloner for the soft interface. Um, yeah, on FreeBSD, you get this clone struct, uh, structure, which, uh, yeah, maybe I should clarify. What a cloner is on, uh, on, on FreeBSD is, a, I guess, a type of interface. So VTNet would be a cloner, uh, EM would be a cloner, um, Bridge would be a cloner. Uh, and so bat add is its own cloner, and uh, this cloner has a bunch of functions, uh, if C match to see if um, the, the, the name of the interface that you're creating uh, matches this cloner, uh, creates to create the interface, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and Linux's equivalent to this is uh, RTNL link ops. And uh, I mean, we could make it just work with that structure straight away, but that would need uh, some pretty big uh, changes and integration with FreeBSD's network code, which would be quite uh, invasive and probably not uh, that desirable. So uh, sometimes supporting something with uh, the Linux KPI isn't the best choice, and there are uh, trade offs to be made. Um, right. Yeah, next thing, uh, struct net device. Um, so net device is uh, Linux's equivalent to ifnet on, uh, on, on FreeBSD. Uh, and uh, 
Batman, in Batman's code, we, uh, this needs to be like uh, passed around the place uh, quite often. And so what I just did was I made it the same as uh, struct if net. Uh, and I uh, alias some of the easy fields, like the MTU, that's just a number. Uh, that could be alias between net device and uh, uh, FreeBSDs, uh, uh, if net. Uh, and then all the Linux specific stuff was just bolted onto the end of that structure. Um, and so that means that a net device can just be passed around as, a, as if it was an if net on FreeBSD and uh, the FreeBSD networking code is number wiser. Uh, and uh, so yeah, for that, the, the, you know, so Linux KPI uh, um, functions aren't always just uh, uh, wrappers and headers. Uh, in some cases, it needs to be a bit more complicated. And so this function here, Linux KPI alloc uh, net dev IFB, uh, what this does is it allocates a net device. Um, yeah, it just uh, <laughs> allocates a net device, and then right after that, that it um, casts this to the IFB. Uh, just to clarify, uh, IFT is the same thing as struct if net. It's just a type diff. Um, and then this gets filled in. Uh, with this function. So this, is, uh, this function is split out from uh, uh, if alloc domain. Um, since we're handling the allocation, I had to take out uh, uh, if um, fill domain from if alloc domain, which sets up the structure. And anyway, those are details. Um, right, and then, uh, and then there are just these functions, uh, uh, which are, so Linux KPI devq uh, xmit, uh, which is equivalent to if output, and uh, rx, which is equivalent to if input. And so uh, uh, for that, then the net device is just cast to the uh, struct if net to get the IFP and to be able to call those functions. Um, so yeah, specifically, net devices are used to pass around uh, hard in spaces. So uh, uh, Batman has to pass around the hard in space because it's, uh, in spaces because it has to manage and say like, okay, I get this packet and the optimal route for this is to pass it through this hard in space. And so it has like a list of these net devices. And so it has to be able to say, send this packet, and then FreeBSD has to interpret that, that and be able to say, okay, then I need to call if output on this uh, uh, if net structure. So, yeah. Um, then the next really big thing was uh, uh, struct skbuff. So skbuff is uh, a Linux's equivalent to mbuffs. Um, and uh, <laughs> they're, they're way more complex, and they have a ton of random functions that start with skb. Uh, and uh, to be completely honest, it kind of feels like SK buffs are, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it kind of feels like it's everything in the kitchen sink. There's so much in, in that structure. And, you know, maybe I just don't get it, but yeah. Um, and so, yeah, for now, uh, when I was developing this, I found it quite a bit easier to not properly back uh, the SK buff structures in the Linux KPI uh, by the mbuff. So right now, uh, data is being like copied back and forth between mbuffs and SK buffs. So that's not ideal, but uh, I like to work on, uh, on getting that backed correctly. But it's, uh, uh, a bit of a, a challenge. Um, and so the big function here is uh, Linux uh, KPI SKB from uh, mbuff, which uh, predictably creates an SKB struct from your mbuff. Uh, and the other, doing it the other way around, turning a, an mbuff to an SKB is uh, uh, quite a bit simpler, because there's less things to handle. Uh, right, and then yeah, there's many other things I had to add and change in the Linux KPI. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, if you'll read those, then. Uh, then you'll have the pleasure of discovering that uh, through my upcoming reviews. Um, right, and yeah, I like to talk about the future, what I like to get done. Um, I like to put Batman uh, Advanced in ports. I still haven't done this. Um, on Wi-Fi support, which I mean, obviously uh, Batman is kind of useless if you're just sticking to Ethernet. Um, yeah, so for now, only uh, uh, um, interfaces which inherit from if ether subber are uh, uh, supported, so that's I think all Ethernet devices, basically, and uh, VTNets for um, virtual machines. Uh, I'd like to, to, to back SK buffs with uh, uh, M buffs, as I said previously. Uh, and I'd like to upstream all the Linux KPI uh, changes. Um, and also BatCTL. So uh, BatCTL is a, um, it's, it's a command on Linux for uh, controlling different parameters of your Batman soft interface. And, uh, yeah, since net, like, generic doesn't really exist uh, yet on FreeBSD, that would have to be done first before adding that. And either way, I mean, there's, a, there's perhaps a discussion to, to, to be had on if you want to have a separate bat TTL command or if you want to put that into if config or I don't know what. Uh, so I wanted to do all this after EuroBSDCon, but uh, yeah, I kind of got caught up by school. So uh, I guess this summer I'll have a bit more time to work on this and hopefully I'll get through these uh, points. Um, right, and I wanted to kind of end with a bit of a call to action. 
you know, when I started off uh, trying to support Batman Advance, uh, honestly, Linux KPI was quite a bit more intimidating. Uh, well, it was quite intimidating and it ended up being uh, quite a bit easier than I thought. I mean, of course, uh, like it did take a long time. There was a lot of shit to get done, uh, but it, I mean, it wasn't really hard stuff, to be honest. Uh, there were very few like major, major roadblocks which we had a, which I really had a hard time with. And so, I mean, if you have a Linux driver that you want to port, um, could be worth trying, maybe. Um, and yeah, and in my opinion, this is a pretty important point for FreeBSD's uh, continued relevancy in certain domains. I mean, uh, people get into uh, operating systems through using those operating systems on their desktops, not really boot servers. And so being able to run that on their desktops and their laptops where, I mean, FreeBSD's Wi-Fi support is not the best at the moment. I mean, I think that's pretty important to get people into FreeBSD. Uh, right, that's all. You guys have any questions? And just before that, uh, here are my contacts if you want to reach out to me. Uh, and I'm always down for a beer if you want a beer. Yeah. Just give me a call. Uh, right, anyway, questions? Uh, well, Freifunk is, because Freifunk is a yeah, prime, Freifunk, so yeah. Batman, Batman well, it's, it's uh, mostly developed by uh, uh, Freifunk. So, okay, so the question was, um, uh, is Freifunk, uh, is Batman uh, used in other places uh, other than Freifunk in Germany? And the answer is, uh, not too much that I know of. The, really, the primary uh, use case is uh, for, um, for that. Uh, other, other mesh networks, like uh, Nice Mesh, uh, in New York, uh, they use uh, primarily uh, OLSR at the moment. So Batman is really like Freifunk, but Freifunk is a pretty big network. So in the end, there are quite a few nodes that run it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is needed for full wireless support? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't looked too much into in detail. I don't think it's very complicated because uh, I mean, all Batman needs is to be able to send uh, a packet with. Um, the, uh, the the Ethernet header, or I guess the equivalent on Wi-Fi, and um, uh, and its own header, and then all the rest is just added to the end. So I, I really don't think it's very difficult to do, uh, but I have not looked into it uh, practically at all at the moment, so I can't really say. Um, but yeah, but I will work on that uh, shortly. So the question is, how would that work for reading a, a signal quality metrics uh, on, on FreeBSD? Um, again, I'm, I'm not exactly sure which metrics uh, internally Batman uses. Um, I mean, I focus mo mostly on the uh, implementation. But I do think that uh, a, a lot of its decisions uh, based on uh, routing are made through the uh, OGMs, uh, which I mean, are, ju are just sent. And it, it just as essentially timing of, of the OGMs, I think. I don't think there's anything really specific. And if there is, then it's probably doable <laughs> to port and to implement the Linux KPI. Yeah. Uh, does Batman actually control the radios and like connect to other hosts running Batman, or does it need to have an intermediary uh, Wi-Fi network in the middle? Um, so the question is, uh, does uh, Batman need an intermediary uh, uh, Wi-Fi network in the middle to connect? Yeah. Um, I think the answer, if I understand your question, is no. Uh, it just, um, I mean, as long as you have two um, hard interfaces that have a link between each other, you can really run it anywhere. You don't need to have any uh, kind of middleman in the middle. It's really just, I have a computer which has an interface. I can run the soft interface and connect it to another computer or router. Yeah, sure. As long as they have a link, that just works. Okay. And they're running Batman, of course. Right. Um, any other questions? Well, then I guess that's all. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for listening.